this thing on. Hey guys, first of all, um, well, welcome back to the channel, but uh, happy Christmas Eve, if that's how you say it. Um, tomorrow's Christmas, um, and you know, it's an exciting time of year. Um, I'm actually about to start wrapping some presents, but figured I might as well make a video. Um, so let's talk basketball. I want to talk about the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, they're at, they're kind of in NBA limbo right now, right? You see where they're at. They're 13th in the West, 9-19. It's not looking very good for them. And that's mainly because, obviously, Ja Morant was out, out on the season for the first 25 games. We all know what happened in uh, that incident. Um, so that's not really the purpose of this video. But what's interesting is that since Ja Morant has come back, it has been somewhat of a movie, right? The first game back, they overcome a deficit. Um, ja... Jaw gets the game winner. Um, I'm not saying that the NBA is scripted or anything, but if they could have written the script, this was the perfect way to come back, especially against Zion Williamson, um, the person who came ahead of him in the draft. Um, so very interesting circumstances, but since then, they've also won the next two games. So they're 3-0 since Ja Morant has come back. And... I don't know. It looks like just the presence of Jaw has reinvigorated this team. Um, they move with a different. They move at a different speed. They. It seems like Jaw Morant brings a lot of confidence to the team, and especially out of his teammates. Um, and I think that contributes in him being. Maybe a top team, a top fifteen player in the league, right? He's definitely a top six point guard, even though just even just coming back. And I would I would argue that he's better than Trey Young. The the person he just beat, I believe, last night. So I would take Ja Morant over Trey Young. And that's saying something considering the way that Trey shoots shoots the ball. So that's interesting, but I think what we want to see for the Memphis Grizzlies is if they're able to surmount the odds of this season or if they're just going to live in this place of obscure, obs the obscure place of being average. Like, they're just like, okay, um... Yeah, they're just okay. They're they're not good. They're not bad. Um, we want to see if they can make um, make up ground to maybe get into the play in, maybe get into the playoffs. So I'm not gonna really harp on the point if they're gonna make the playoffs. But the interesting thing is who would they have to kick out? Because we all know, we all know. The Timberwolves, who are the first in the West right now, they're not going anywhere. Denver, not going anywhere. OKC, not going anywhere. And you can say the same with the Kings, the Clippers, the Mavs. And that's about it. The next, the next tier of teams that could miss the playoffs are... Definitely the Pelicans and the Rockets. They're playing well. The Rockets especially are playing, I would say, over our standards that we set for them at the beginning of the year. We did not expect the Rockets to be, I'm not going to say good, but this, like, they're treading water. They're above 500. Um on the season, which is surprising for them, especially being second last in the West last year. So them being at the eight seed right now, as we head into Christmas, 
is really surprising. Do I think that they can uh, keep that up? No, I don't. So definitely the Pelicans, definitely the Rockets. The Lakers, um, wow. D'Lo's not playing well. Austin Reeves has Austin Reeves has found his stride, but we're not seeing too much production from the bench other than last night versus OKC, where Rui Hachimura, Rui Hachimura went for 21 points, right? So other than that, there hasn't been a lot of bench production from the Lakers. So they do seem to be in some sort of trouble unless they make a trade at the trade deadline because although LeBron's amazing, year 21, he's about to be 39, he shouldn't have to carry he shouldn't have to carry this much of the load. He had to score 40 points last night for them to win by 9. That's crazy. Uh and he had to go off in the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter. So, don't get me don't get me started on the Lakers. Um Golden State is only one game over 500. Now, obviously we're not going to count the Warriors out, but that it is the end of the Golden State dynasty, at least in the sense where they were dominating the league for so long. That that time is over. They are tenth in the West and just barely treading water. They'll be lucky to make uh, the playoffs this year unless they make unless they they're able to put together some wins. Now they have won five straight, but that shows you how much a, of a de deficit that they have been in. Um, especially with Draymond out, Clay's pay playing well, but you're telling me that winning five games in a row, winning five games in a row, you're only one game over 500. That's saying something. Phoenix, 14 and 14, um, they, Phoenix definitely has offense. But their defensive presence is non-existent, and that's that's leading to their downfall. If Bradley Beal comes back, maybe their offense can over overset that defense. But I, they're one of those teams that needs to make a trade at the trade deadline or figure something out. So that's imperative for them. So, are the Grizzlies able to overcome these odds? Yes, they are. Um, I think they'll be... I think Phoenix will eventually be able to take the rocket spot. And I think I think with a lot of effort, the Grizzlies can kick the Pelicans out of the playoffs or even the play-in. Um, I, I would bet my money more on John Morant than Zion Williamson at this point. Um, I'll be honest, I, I'm not sure if Zion is that guy yet or will ever be that guy to be honest so that's 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 content for another video but in terms of if the Grizzlies can squeak into the playoffs there's a chance I'm gonna predict I don't think this is bold in particular it will be a challenge for them, but I think that the Grizzlies can make it into the nine spot and win a game in the play-in. I think they can get into that seven or eight spot uh, when it's all said and done. And I think, you know, what, what, what would be really interesting? Uh, a Grizzlies versus... The Grizzlies versus OKC in the first round. Get those two young teams up and firing. You can see where Shea is and you can see where Ja is. Because I think Shea's definitely in top in the top five. Uh, he, in, in fact, he might have taken Ja's spot uh, for top five this year. So we'll see how that goes. I'm excited for the second half of the season. And guys, let me know what uh, Christmas Day game you're most excited to see um that's all i have for you guys today 
Um, you know, like, comment, share, subscribe. Hopefully I can get my hair braided for the next video because I'm tired of picking out this afro. It looks fantastic though, I know. All right, I'll see you guys on the next one.